founded the Irish Republican Brotherhood. He was imprisoned in 1865 and sent to serve his sentence in an English prison as a result of his activities as manager of the national newspaper, The Irish People. He was released in 1871, where he moved to New York and continued his fight against British rule in Ireland, raising money for a skirmishing fund. O'Donovan Ross had died in Staten Island, America, at the age of 83, and he has been flown home for his burial in Ireland. O'Donovan has been given a public funeral with a large attendance. It has been thought right before we turn from this place in which we have laid the remains of O'Donovan Rossa that one among us should, in the name of all, speak the praise of this valiant man and endeavour to formulate the thought and hope that are in us as we stand around his grave. And if anything makes it fitting, that I, rather than some other, I, rather than one of the grey-haired men who were young with him and who shared in his labour and in his suffering, should speak. And perhaps it is that I may be seen as speaking on behalf of a new generation that have been re-baptised in the Fenian faith and have accepted the responsibility of carrying out the Fenian programme. I propose to you then that here, by the grave of this unrepentant Fenian, we renew our baptismal vows. Here, by the grave of this unconquered and unconquerable man, we ask of God, each one for himself, such unshakable purpose, such high and gallant courage, and such unbreakable strength of soul as belonged to Adonavan Rasa. Deliberately here we avow ourselves, as he avowed himself. We of the Irish volunteers, and you others among us who are associated with us in today's task and duty. Today's task and duty must stand together henceforth in brotherly union for the achievement of the freedom of Ireland. We know only one definition of freedom. It is Cohn's definition, it is Mitchell's definition, it is Russell's definition. And let no man blaspheme the cause the dead generations of Ireland served by giving it any other name and definition than their name and their definition. We stand at Ross's grave not in sadness, but rather in exaltation of spirit that it has been given on to us to come into so close a communion with this brave and splendid gale. Splendid and holy causes are served by men who themselves are splendid and holy. O'Donovan Rossa was splendid in the proud manhood of him, splendid in the heroic grace of him, splendid in the Gaelic strength and clarity and truth of him. And all that splendor and pride and strength was compatible with a humility and a simplicity of devotion to Ireland. All that was brave and beautiful and splendid in Ireland. The holiness and simplicity of patriotism of a Michael O'Cleary or of an Owen O'Browning. The clear, true eyes of this man, almost alone in his day, visioned Ireland as we of today surely would have here. Not free merely, but Gaelic as well. Not Gaelic merely, but free as well. In as close a spiritual communion with them today than ever before, or perhaps ever again. In spiritual communion with those who are dead, living and dead, who suffer in English prisons with them. And in spirit of communion too with our own dear comrades who suffer in English prisons today. And speaking on their behalf and on our own, we pledge to Ireland our love. And we pledge to English rule in Ireland our hate. This is a place of peace, sacred to the dead for men should speak with all charity and restraint. But I hold it a Christian thing, as O'Donovan Rossa held it, to hate evil, to hate untruth, to hate oppression, and hating these things to strive to overthrow them. Our foes are strong and wise and wary, but strong and wise and wary as they are, they cannot undo the miracles of God who ripens in the heart of young men the seed sown by the young men of a former generation. 
and the seeds sown by the young men of 65 and 67 are coming to their glorious ripening today. The rulers and defenders of realms had need be wary if they would guard against such processes. Life springs from death, and from the graves of patriot men and women spring living nations. The defenders of this realm had worked well in secret and in the open. They think they have pacified Ireland. They think they have purchased half of us and intimidated the other half. They think they have assumed everything. They think they have provided against everything. But the fools, the fools, the fools, they have left us our feet in death. And while Ireland holds these graves, Ireland unfree shall never be at peace.